me take a look at basic graphing using the HP 39G2 graphing calculator. And first one we'll take a look at is y is equal to x. Now the idea here is, I know this is a simple graph, but the idea is to learn the basic building blocks. We can then combine them together to graph uh, difficult uh, graphs. So uh, make sure you know how to do all these basic building blocks because everything in algebra is composed of these. So if I come back to here, um, you see over here, uh, if you're not at this place, you can press home to get back there. But you got symbol, plot, uh, those are the two we're going to be using mainly. If I press symbol, that'll come here where I can put in whatever I want to graph. Different ways you can put X in. You see X is on the bottom, bottom row here. I can press F3 to put an X in there. And once I get that, then I press enter. And um, then you see you've got X there. Now to graph, you just press your plot. And then you'll see, see this. And that'd be our graph. Let's take a look at y is equal to x squared. Now that um that was our graph. If yours doesn't look like that for some reason, it could be that your zoom is screwed up, so you might want to go watch the video on zooming. Um and that uh will show you how to set your uh graph or your calculator back to the standard standard window. Um, anyway, I want to press symbol to go back here. That was one way to choose X. Another way to choose it is over here. You see X, T, theta, and uh, capital N. If I push that key, it'll put the X there also. And um, I want to do X squared. So that's, see I got an X squared button. And after I push that, then I press enter. And we got X squared there. Now if I press plot, then that'll give us our graph. Well, let's look how you do any number up there. Third power, fourth power, fifth power. Key thing is we got any number up in the exponent. Well, press my symbol to go back here. Um, I'm going to um, press my Y or our X. There it is. Carrot. Uh, oh no, there's no carrot. I'm thinking to TI uh, T8384. Uh, the X the Y button. So if I push that, it puts the carrot on there for me, and then I'll put three in and press enter, and see so gives me X the third. Now if I press plot, then that gives me my graph. Now, if we have uh, y is equal to x to one half, this uh, I don't care what this graph looks like. I'm demonstrating how do you handle when you got any fraction in your exponent. But even more than that, if you um, have more than a single single number or single variable in your exponent, the trick to put in your calculator is you have to put parentheses around the exponent like that. It's kind of a general rule that works 100% of the time. Um, some calculators you don't have to do that but that never hurts. So I'll go back to my symbol. Um, I'm going to press my um, X key over here and then I'll do my X to the Y. That's my caret. Beginning parentheses 1 divided by 2 and then closing parentheses and then enter. And you see it gives me X to the 1 half power. Now if I press graph, press plot, then that gives me my graph. Let's uh, try it. I, I, I haven't even actually tried it on myself on this, this calculator. Let's try it without the parentheses and see what happens. Most calculators will give you a wrong graph. So I'll go back to symbol. I'm sitting right here, so I do max key and then caret. Now x to the y. I have to break myself of that. And then um, I'll do 1 divided by 2 and enter. This is what most of them do. See how it does x to the first power and then all that divided by 2. If I press plot, it comes from nowhere near our correct graph. So again, have to put parentheses around it if you have more than a single number or a single variable um, up in your exponent. Okay. 
Well, let's take a look at the square root of x. It's another one you do fairly often in algebra. I press my symbol to go back here. Um, now, you see up, uh, below the buttons in blue, uh, like the x squared, here's the square root symbol. So to access that, I'm going to do a shift x squared, and it puts a square root on there. And you have to put the beginning parentheses, then your x key, and then your closing parentheses. Now, um, if you just have a single x, I think you can put that in without the beginning parentheses. But to be on the safe side, if you have anything more in a single x in there, you have to have the parentheses around it, like, like you're, what you're seeing. So it's always a good practice to go ahead and always put them. And then do an enter. And you see the square root of x. Now if I graph this, press plot, that gives me a graph. Now I might be looking at that and thinking, well, that's the same one what you just did. Well, yeah. Because x to 1 half is another way to write uh, square, root of, square root of x. Just to demonstrate it, if I did not put the parentheses, if I go back to my symbol, and um, then I do my square root, so I do shift, x squared, and I put in x minus 2. My intention is that um, all the x minus 2 would be underneath the square root. So let's press enter and see. See how I just put the square root over the x? So that's why you have to put parentheses around it if you wanted to apply the, everything inside. Like if that x minus 2 is supposed to be under the square root, I'd have to do a shift, x squared, beginning parentheses, um, x minus 2, closing parentheses, and enter. Always a good idea to always use parentheses, because then you, you're in control. You know exactly what's happening with what you're graphing. Okay, let's look at the cube root of x. And this specifically is we're looking at how do you how do you handle it when you've got any number in that slot? Three, four, uh, three or greater. If it's two, it's a square root, and one uh, isn't defined, or zero or negative numbers. So looking at the cube root of x. Well, um, you see uh, the x to the y below the, that is a radical symbol with an n. That implies that um, you're putting in the uh, the index. For this one, we got the uh, third root. So we'll put the 3 in first. And then we'll do shift x to the y. And see it puts the nth root. We'll put a beginning parentheses. Then our x. Closing parentheses. And then enter. And that's the uh, cube root of x you see there. And then we press plot. That gives us our graph. which looks something like that right there. Now, oftentimes I show the fourth root, even though it's exactly the same as one we just did. But let's just see that for another example. So I'm going to go to my symbol, put my four in first, and then I want to do shift, and then the x to the y, and put the nth root, and then a beginning parentheses, then I'll put my x key in, and a closing parentheses. Always, whenever you do these functions, always put your beginning parentheses and your closing parentheses, and whatever's inside the parentheses will go underneath the radical. And then press enter. And now if we press plot, then it gives us our graph. It looks like the square root, but actually it's a little closer down to the x-axis. So it looks something like that. Now well, let's take a look at the absolute value of x. Now, um, I'm going to show you two different ways of doing this. Um, first way, I did it the long way, and then I, when I was creating this video, I noticed it says ABS right down here. So I'll, I'll show you the short way first. So press symbol. To get to the absolute value, I do shift and then the negative. And it puts ABS and beginning parentheses. And I put my X key and my closing parentheses and enter. You see the absolute value there. I press plot. That gives me my graph. Very simple. Where I also found it, assuming I can remember, uh, let's take a look. If I press my um, symbol, and uh, if it's not on a button or anywhere, then it's or uh, below a button, it's probably underneath the math button. If I went go to math, it started out up here at the top. 
whatever his first one is. That's been calculus. And I, I started scrolling down. I just uh, created some of these videos with a Casio, so I'm looking for something called algebra. Well, I didn't run across that. But then I ran across this one that said real. And if I right arrow over here to this menu and start scrolling down, notice what I have. I have absolute value. So you can press enter there, and that's how you can choose the absolute value. Then put an X key, closing parentheses, enter, and then plot the graph. Why did I show you the long way? Well, if you don't see something on here, um, go go browse through those menus. You're probably going to find it there somewhere. Let's take a look at how to handle a fraction on this calculator. Let's take a look at x plus 2 over x minus 3. The trick to uh, working with uh, fractions in any graphing calculator is, well, not I shouldn't say any. Some handle it very well. But if you have more than a single number or a single variable on top or bottom, put parentheses around the part. So put parentheses around the top, parentheses around the bottom. Now, if I just had a single X up here, I wouldn't need to put parentheses. wouldn't hurt, but I wouldn't need to do it. Now, other than that, you type in exactly as you see it. So if I go back to my symbol, I do my beginning parentheses, X plus 2, closing parentheses, divided by beginning parentheses, x minus 3, closing parentheses. Notice the beginning parentheses and closing parentheses are on top and the bottom. And then press enter. And you can see the way it looks then. And then if I press plot, that will give me my graph. Then I'll just sketch this. I won't spend a whole lot of time on it. Look something like that. Now that's that's how it demonstrates how to work with fractions. Let's look at these dashes. Got a dash here, uh, and then in the square root dash x dash three. Typically, on your graphing calculators, you have two dashes. You have the one on the bottom here, which is the uh, negative, has parentheses around it. Then you have the one inside that's a minus. The general rule is, is if your dash is very beginning of whatever, then it's going to be a negative. So this is the dash is the very beginning of our problem, so this will be a negative, the one with the parentheses around it. This one is the very beginning of our square root, so it'll be a negative, parentheses around it. This one is between two items, and if it's between two items, it's a minus. Now you might argue that this dash is between the square root and the x. Well, yeah, it is, but it goes against our first rule. The first rule says if it's a beginning of whatever, it's a negative. Other than that, we pretty well type it in as we see it. Now, I think this has probably been the calculators handled this the best of all of them, and I'll show it. If I press symbol, put in my negative, and I need my square root. Um, so my square root is uh, with x squared, so I do shift x squared. Put a beginning parentheses for the square root, then negative x minus 3, closing parentheses. Now notice this negative, this is a negative, this is a negative, and this is a minus. And you can actually see the difference between them. If I press enter, that gives me that. And I press plot. And that gives us our graph. So it looked like that. Let's go start changing some items on it. So I go back to my um, symbol. Now instead of retyping it each time, you see the edit here? I can press F1 to edit it. And then I can use my left arrow key to go over and change different items. Like this, uh, the dash before the X. Instead of that being a negative, let me do a backspace and change that to a minus. And I can press F6 uh, to say OK on it, or I could do Enter, either way. Now if I go to graph this, press Plot, worked perfectly. Didn't change a thing, did it? Let me go back to Symbol, choose F1 for Edit. And I'm going to go and put my cursor between the minus and the 3. And I'll do my backspace. Instead of a minus, let me put a negative there. And do F6 for OK. And now let me press plot. Worked perfectly. No matter what, I could not get this to give me the wrong graph. 
Now, every uh, Texas Instruments I've looked at so far and every Casio would, would give me the wrong graph um, if I did that last uh, item. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, this, this seems to give us, the, uh, give us the right graph each time. Now, if I go back to symbol, see I have this here. You can also do the check. See F2? And uh, that'll check to see if there's any problems with it. Let me do a F1. I'm going to put a minus here at the end. Probably won't like that. I'm doing enter. Gives us syntax error. Um, yeah, well, let me, uh, I guess it won't let me go past that. It's kind of bad. I wanted to check, check that against that. Oh, well. Anyway, very robust in this, uh, which is kind of nice. Now, this last one, we're going to look at uh, combining our different building blocks together. So we're going to have x to the power of x squared minus 3x plus square root of x. Now remember the trick to it is, if you got more than a single number or a single variable in your exponent, you have to put parentheses around it. So when I plug this in, I want to put parentheses around the exponent. Other than that, I type in as I see it. Come up here, I'll do my x caret, or x to the y. Beginning parentheses, and then I want x squared, so I do my x key, x squared, minus 3x, plus the square root. So we'll do shift, x squared, and I'll put a beginning parentheses for the square root, and I'll put my x in, closing parentheses for the square root, closing parentheses for the exponent, and then we'll do enter. And you can see it looks good up there. And now if I do my plot, That'll give me my graph. Looks something like that. Okay. Um, purpose of the graphing calculator for college algebra. Maybe you used in intermediate algebra, you did everything by hand. Plotted points, created T-charts. And you're the best point plotter there was in uh, the previous class. Um, everybody else was happy with three points in their T-chart. You, you put nine or ten. So you came up with this graph. Well, we know what that is. That's that parabola, that U-shaped graph. Like that. Or is it? Maybe graph is coming like this, and it's the heart shape. You just didn't plot enough points. If you plotted more points, you would have saw it come uh, develop this shape. Maybe it comes up like this, and it comes back down over here. Maybe this comes up like this, comes back down over here. Maybe it comes back down at x equals 500. You would have had to put 500 points in your t-chart before you saw it come back down. Plotting points is the worst way in the world to graph. The only time plotting points really works out well is if you already know what the graph looks like. Well, if you already know what the graph looks like, then why are you even graphing it? Um, the uh, graphing calculator is a step better, but it still has its flaws. The standard viewing window might look like this. So that I think that it looks like the parabola when I when it actually does come back comes back down. Now we'll see later on leading coefficient tests and give us a hint of what uh, is potentially happening to the the graph, but it still won't give us the precise graph. And if you zoom out enough, you're not going to be able to tell what's going on. Uh, you have to go on and take a class called Calc One or Business Calc to get the true picture of the graph. There's a whole chapter and that revolves around different techniques that help you get uh, the true picture. And this was uh, basic graphing using HP 39G2.